let's look at it. Uh, before we really uh, read it verse by verse and, and try to explain it, I want to point out something that stands out on Psalm 23. Psalm 23 is not to the church, it's not to the world, it is to you. It is not to the world, it is not to the church, because in Psalm 23, you will see mine and I. Mine and I. Uh, you know, uh, I preached it last week in Lagos, different from the way I'm going to teach it. Uh, the, but I preached it in Hebrew, Yahavah Rohim. I show them the Hebrew. I preach it in Hebrew. I'm not going to go there today because I'm not trying to tantalize you. I'm trying for you to see the effect of this. You know, uh, when you take Rohim and put I after Rohim, you personalize it. It becomes personalized. When, you know, whereas uh, uh, other people can just look at it and say, the God is my shepherd, the Lord is my shepherd. You know, but you didn't e emphasize the my there. No, I am so, this psalm is so selfishly written that it is so much my God that I can care about whether it's your God. I don't know how to say it better. Uh, it, is, it is a selfishly written psalm, which you have to take selfishly. When you enter into this psalm, you are not considering yourself in the church. You are considering yourself in a secret closet with you and God alone. And the dialogue is that, God, I don't care who is outside of this. I don't care who is. I know your eyes is uh, on the spiral. You, you go to and fro. But this time, let that eyes be on me. This time, concentrate on me. You, nobody else can do what you can do for me. So you may be shepherd to all the world, but I don't care. At this point, you are... The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I can stay in just this one verse all day long. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Tell your neighbor it's all about me. <laughs> no, don't, don't, don't play religious on me. We need to love our neighbor. No, 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 no. When it comes to you and God, it's all about me. You know, I love the Lord and I want him to be yours. But when he gets to your closet, let him be yours. Okay, but while he's in my closet, it's all about me. Do not grab God with one hand. Do not grab God with just one shoulder. When, he, when you finally have an audience with him, be like Jacob. I won't let you go. Not until you bless the world, but until you bless just me. It's got to be, it, it is a selfishly written song. And when you are reading it in these seven days, make it selfishly a uh, song that God intentionally wants you to be selfish. God wants you to want him so much. Want him so much. The Lord is mine. Yeah. Not everybody else. He's not everybody's God as far as I'm concerned. He is mine. So when he gets to you, he's yours, he's mine. The Lord is my shepherd. Oh, I can stay on that, uh, you know. The word Lord and shepherd is a play in words. Because Lord means owner. Shepherd means caretaker. For the Lord to be, for the Lord to be your Lord, or to be your shepherd, one or two things have to happen. He either bought you or birthed you. <laughs> you don't own no sheep that you didn't buy or your sheep birthed. Everything you own are things that you buy or things that you bought. So, the Lord is my buyer or birther. 
And because he birthed me or birthed me, he is so responsible that everything I needed to be me is called want. Everything that is needed to make me whole is called want. Let me say it this way. Everything I needed to be complete. Yeah. Welcome to your month of completion. Amen. Welcome to your... God said, I got you. I have completed you because I am the one responsible for bringing you here. I either bought you when I paid the price on Calvary or birthed you Amen. when you become born again. Let's look at the buying and burning. Let's look at it. At Calvary, he bought you. He paid for you. He paid for you. But it doesn't mean he owns you yet. The, 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 the wage or the, the price was paid. Okay, to those of you who did black history, I don't know whether I touched this. There are some slaves that was free, but they still stay with their master. Bought, but they still stay with their master. But there has never been anybody that is born. That's why God did those two things for us. He bought us and he birthed us. Because if you are bought... You have the option. But if you are born, you have no option. You cannot crawl back and say, unborn me. Okay? But if you are purchased, you have the option. So the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Let me give you some, uh, uh, some deep things. This psalm is talking about one of the most important things I want to drive into the head of every member here. It's called relationship. You will never advance in God until you check your relationship. As a matter of fact, 90% of this church don't know how to pray. 90%. Maybe Nevin is the only 10% that I said aside. But 90% don't know how to pray. Why? Because our prayer, our prayer either of petition, our either a prayer of repetition, or a prayer of uh, 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 supplication. But we, just one more prayer. I, 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 huh? Intercession, thank you. Those are the prayers that we call prayer. Especially when you say pray for me. You want me to intercede for you. Okay. I will because I'm a pastor. But I don't like it. Okay. Why? Let me selfishly tell you why. Prayer of intercession, supplication, uh, Petition has nothing to do to me. Has nothing to do to help me. And most of the time in your secret closet, you spend time doing petition, intercession, supplication in your secret time. If I was God, I will slap you on both faces. I would just let down and slap you. Because when you are one-on-one -on -one with God, you have no business petitioning, intercession, and doing it. You have to do a prayer of what is called relationship. Yeah. The prayer of relationship is the only thing that grows your spirit. If you don't pray prayer of relationship, if you are not in commune with God, your growth spiritually is never seen. And that is why you are the loudest prayer but the least spiritually blessed. 
because you don't know what a relationship prayer is. You don't know how to pray and have relationship with God. And that your prayer, because of the relationship you have with God, that your prayer will entice God to the level he will promote you. He will say, come up nearer. Now you're talking. Come up nearer. Because what was God doing yesterday? If you don't know it in this church, I'll slap you. Thank you. What is he doing today? What will he be doing tomorrow? That's all God does. And your relationship prayer is a prayer of glorifying him. That's what he created you for. So the psalmist started with, with a, 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 a relationship prayer. Oh, this is so good. With a relationship. He said, God, this is how I relate to you. You are my shepherd. Hey, and God and God shuffle his shirt and say, Wow, you recognize me. I am your shepherd. Ain't nobody can shepherd you like me. as a matter of fact, God, just in case you don't know, you are Lord, you are my owner. That is relationship. That is relationship. It is that relationship that gets the service to the next place. Until you enter the gates of God with the relationship, you won't have a passcode to everything you want. Relationship. Let, let's watch. Watch, watch what he's got. Second verse. Second, the, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall know one. Uh, okay. He maketh me to lie down. Where? In green, oh, I'm gonna blow you out, out tonight. Forget about that 20 minute stuff. <laughs> Did you see the He maketh me. Why will God make me? I thought we have, we have our own volition. No, you don't have no more volition when you make Him your Lord and your shepherd. <laughs> You have relinquished. So he says, since you relinquish yourself to me, everybody shall relations. Listen, I'm in relationship with some members that I can talk so bad about Coco, and he, she ain't gonna get mad after ch service. But let me say it about some of you here. I don't know why he picked me out in the service because I don't have that relationship with you. You you follow me. If you have relationship, then God can pick on you. <laughs> God, God can pick on you. He can, he can, and this gets to the place where you become a friend of God. Friends do things different than just acquaintance. God don't want to be your acquaintance. He wants to be your friend. Oh, so it is the friendship, the relationship that we have with him that caused him to make us. Yeah. Let me show you something. I don't like to eat everything she make me eat. I don't like what she make me eat. But the reason why she make me eat that is that she wants me to be in such a shape that I'm not going to the hospital every day. So she make me eat what is going to preserve me. God said, because we have that relationship, I'm going to make you lie down. Yeah. I'm going to make you lie down because you're going to burn yourself out. And you ain't going to be good for yourself or good for me. So because I love you so much, I'm going to make you. Yeah, uh, yeah I get it. He make me lie down in green pasture. Now, I just get through make. I haven't even got to lie down, what lie down means. I haven't even got to green pasture, what green pasture means. Let's dig. I don't know how far we can go on this. Uh, uh, what will the shepherd do for you? If you are in relationship with the shepherd, the shepherd will do six things for you. And I will give you those six things and go back to number one and start probably just talk about number one. Make you all mad because you are going to be agitating in your mind. What does the raise five 
Look like. The first thing the shepherd will do for you is here. He maketh me to lie down in green pasture. He leadeth. Number one, the shepherd will lead you. And if we can get through with leading in the next two months, and I'm for real, it just number one, lead you. If we can get through with that in the next two months, you'll be rejoicing. Because you don't know the depth of what a shepherd leading means. But it's going to blow your mind. Number two, he protects you. Number three, he restore you. <laughs> no, no, no. Stay in number two. Okay. That's where we are. He lead at me. Yeah, stay there. Oh, stay there. You ain't going get, to get by that easy. Uh, so he protect, protect you. He restore you. Five things. Number four, he feed you. And number five, he loves you. Now, let me, I've given you five, right? Let's read it. Lead, protect, restore, feed, and love. Oh, my God. All right. Let's go back to, he maketh me to lie down in green pasture. He leadeth me. He leaded me. So let's look at the leading of the shepherd. Let's look at his leading. The first stop we get to is that he lead me beside. That word beside is heavy. He didn't lead me into. He lead me beside. Sheep are afraid of Tubulous water. Fee sheep are scared of gushing water. The reason is that sheep die quickly from gushing water. It kills them. Why? Because God made the mouth of the sheep and the nose of the sheep so close together that when the sheep wants to drink the water, turbulent water will get into their nursery and they will suck it in and die. The thing that refreshes you can kill you. The things that you think you need can kill you. So because why did God have to lead us? He has to lead us, number one, because we don't even know how to drink. We don't know how to drink. I have seen pool of living water flow through this and everybody look at it and say, manna. You know what manna means? That's what the children of Israel say. When they, when the angels brought food from heaven and they look at it and say, no, they didn't say manna. They say manna. Because if you know the meaning of manna, it's not manna. Ain't nothing called manna. It's manna. What is this? <laughs> what is it? That's what my name means. And God will bring you a blessing. And... My name. What is this? So God has to lead by the still water. Still water is a water that rarely moves. And so the sheep can bend the head without the fear of just getting choked. So, leading is so critical. Let's, let's go deeper. He lead. Everybody say, he lead. lead. Come on, shout, he lead. he lead. Let me mess you up. What do you have to do for God to lead you? The answer is nothing. <laughs> Just be his. Because, guess what? That's what he does. Leading is what he does. Leading is his nature. As long as you submit yourself to him, you're going to get led. 
And he's now telling you that you're going to get laid. And these are the ways you're going to get laid. You're going to get laid into, beside, still water, beside, not into. Because some things, if you are laid into it, it will swallow you. If you are laid beside it, you can analyze it and take your time. That is why God is so patient with us. That he lead us beside the water and we are looking at it and say, manna, and he's still patting us and say, drink, he's going to help you. When he lead you into it, he's forcing you to do it. When he lead you beside it, he's giving you the volition. And we have that opportunity so many times that we don't take advantage of. Uh, uh, let's look at where he lead us. He made me to lie down in green pasture. He leaded me where? Beside the still water. Number three. Number three. He restored my soul so the still water does its job. The purpose of the still water is for restoration of your soul. Let's look at another leading. He leaded me in the past. Oh my God. It is not a path. He leaded me in the path of righteousness. Can I sit here for just a minute? Because I'm going to go back to leading. He leaded me in the path. So righteousness has more than one path. I, 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 you learn English like I did. He said paths. That's mean plural. So what is the plurality of righteousness? I thought righteousness is just one thing. Righteousness has two different paths. There is one path of righteousness that Jesus gave us or righteousness given. There is another righteousness that you are called into. Righteousness given, righteousness called into. The righteousness given was that the demand of God was so high. The requirement of God was so high. And no matter how hard we try to meet the demand of God, we fall short. For all have sinned. And what? And what? fall short of the righteousness that God demanded because all have sinned. So, since we all have sinned and nobody can attain this, that is why Jesus sacrificially meets the requirement of this righteousness and then turn around and hand it over to you. Watch this. So when you appear before God and Michael said you can't go past this line. Why? Because you are human. So what? Because you have sin. And only the righteous shall see God. You remember that? So Michael, the archangel said you can, you can see God. I made appointment. It don't matter. You are not righteous. Only the righteous shall see God. Then that is when you say, okay, Michael, hang out, you know, I'll be right back. And you go right behind the tree called Calvary. And you put on the garment called Christ. And you walk in there like this. Michael did not see you. He's looking at what you got on. And what you got on look like the only one that is permissible 
that has the righteous to see Christ. So Michael, who was harassing you a few minutes ago, start talking to you. Excuse me, sir. You can enter into the glory of the Lord. It is not your righteousness. It is the garment that you took from the cross that you put on that allow you access. That is why I say come boldly. As a matter of fact, when you put it on, you don't even, you don't, don't let Michael know you are inside that garment. You come boldly like, oh, what's up, Michael? I gotta go. And Michael will be, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, attention, sir. And access granted. It's time for a Mind Therapy Minute from Pavilion of Hope Ministries. The razor is sharp, but can cut a tree. The axe is strong, but it cannot cut the air. The moral of the story is everyone is important according to their unique purpose. Never look down on anyone unless you are admiring their shoes. At Pavilion of Hope Ministries, our mission is to cultivate and promote the spiritual growth of all people by spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are a training ground to equip disciples with kingdom principles and revelations of the word of God. We are called to seek and save those that are lost. Please join us for worship at one of our Memphis locations. In the southeast, we have 4170 Riverdale Road, and in Frazier, we have 2869 Woodlawn Terrace. Pavilion of Hope, where we create a culture of change throughout the nations that impacts and empowers others to live a Christ-purposed life. is one path he leadeth me notice now he didn't say us I told you this is a selfish this is a selfish song it, the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he leadeth me in the, it is personal it is personal it is a relationship song but let's look at it. So the righteousness number two is the righteousness that you are called into. This is where I really want to touch in the book. For you to know even though you have the righteousness purchased by, for you by Christ, the second righteousness he's talking about it's righteousness that you are calling to that he say, now that you are free, do not relent yourself back into slavery. And there is a demand. And I, I think, it, 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 give me Psalm 77, 19. Let's go in there first. Give me Psalm 77, 19. Uh, you know, I, 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 I don't want to miss that. Upstairs, give me Psalm 7719. Maybe 9 or 19, somewhere in there. All right. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Thy way, O oh Lord, is in the seas, and thy path, where? In great waters. And the footsteps are not even seen or unknown. I want to talk about the second path of righteousness. And that second path of righteousness is the path that you are invited to walk in. This is where I want to tabernacle. Because this path is not on biscuit wheel. It's not a gravy train. Because this path may lead you in great waters. This path may drown you. This path 
may be a path that you say, Lord, are you there? Do you hear me? Do you see me? It is righteousness that you have been called to walk in. He that, oh, what is that scripture that Paul say? He that will, oh my God, the scripture was right in my tongue. I, 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 I need to escape, but I'll get to it. Uh, something godly will, oh my God. Okay. The devil is a lie. He'll, he'll come to me. If you will walk in the righteousness that you are called into, it ain't that hard in here. If you will walk in the righteousness that you are called into, that righteousness sometimes is uncomfortable. Amen. That is the righteousness that says even if everybody is doing it, you've been called into a certain righteousness and you cannot do it. That is the righteousness that says even though you need it, you cannot take it because it's not yours, you have been called into this path. This is the path that most Christians look at and they don't understand why God will allow a safe person's car to be repossessed. Why God will allow a speaking in tongues Saints to be fired on the job. It is a path that you will walk because we look at the few that are on top and we aspire to be like them. But if you really want my glory, you have to investigate my story because my story took me through, watch this. Yea, though, uh, he said, he took me through the, the, the seas and great waters. It will allow the water not only to get to your neck, but to get to your lip. And any inch, you're going to drown. And you will stay there for so long. And people will be wondering. Even you yourself will be wondering. God are you there? I call on you. And it seems that you did not answer. It seems that you are so far away. Give me the, the next verse there. That way is in the sea. And the path in the great waters. And your footstep is so silent. That I can't even hear. Next verse. Upstairs. What happened today? You got somebody different there? Okay. Thy way, O oh God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so? No, 13. Thou li Thank you. This is what I want. Okay. Thou leadest. Did I just say lead? Thou leadest thy people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. I want to explain this to you. You, God, you lead me. Go to 19. Let me show it to you. God, your way is in the sea. Sea, talk about rough waters, turbulence. And that's where God's way is. Your way is in the sea. Your path in great waters. And your footstep, we don't even know. That is the way of the Lord. But then now he turned you over to the shepherd. Watch this. 20. 20 says, you lead that people like a flock. But you lead them through the hands of Moses, the chief shepherd, Aaron, the under shepherd, pastor, the chief shepherd, uh, 
what do we call our coverage pastors, the Aarons. But watch this now. People will take for Moses to lead them in great waters. But don't let Aaron try it. Because, but the Bible says the way God leads us is not through the bishop only, but through the Aaron in the coverage. And if you want to fulfill the righteousness that you have been called into, you have to understand the leading of the Lord, which is through the seas, but he will not just do it by himself. He uses a Moses and an Aaron. And if you are not matured enough, then you only have the righteousness purchased for you by Christ. You have not entered into the righteousness that you are called into. And the righteousness you are called into is what is going to give you the stuff that you are looking for. The righteousness of Christ gives you access to heaven, but you can live hell on earth. And I've seen a lot of people living hell on earth and trying. You see, I'm, 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 I, 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 have a, I have a teaching I'm working on when the church is ready. When the church is ready. It's called the financial dynamics of the church. Because the problem why we have the haves and the have not is because they don't know how the way of the Lord works. If you, have you ever been in, okay, have you ever been in a, in a place that you go to a project and you find a Jew in, in that project and we got a bunch of Jews in America. You can call yourself black and we are the chosen and you just lie. Because there are some things that the Jewish are doing to walk in the path of righteousness that lead them to their blessing. Oh, I'm going to wear this church out. I'm going to wear this church out because your eyes will become open. How come this handful of people that the entire, the entire, Israel is about the size of Memphis and, and, and Collier here. The entire Israel. And about 80% of Nobel Prize winners come from there. 60% of billionaires, not millionaires, you Americans do millionaires. Billionaires on earth come from there. And some of them are not even saved. They do not have the righteousness that Christ purchased for them, but they enter into the righteousness they are called into. Yes, I will show you some stuff. They enter into that righteousness, and when you enter into the righteousness you are called into, then every, the righteousness you are called into has to do with the way you walk on earth and achieve things on earth. The righteousness that Christ purchased for you, you know, has to do with you making it to heaven. And because of that, listen, black folks, this will make you mad, but I'm going to tell you. Because of that, our mentality has been messed up in such a way that we gave up on earth. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, yes. Swing low. Sweet chariot. Wait a minute. Carry you home to go and do what? You broke on earth. 
you broke on earth. Why do you want to get out of here? Because you refuse to walk in the righteousness you are called into and you gave up on earth because you know you got a blank card to enter into heaven. This world is not my own. See? You just passing by? That's why you are broke. That is why we are broke. Our mentality is a mentality that we gave up on the path of righteousness that we are called into. And now we're just taking the path that somebody has paid for and say, I received Jesus, swing low chariot, get me out of here. <laughs> oh, if I have a minute. I'm going to wear this church out. But we have to understand that God not only purchased us righteousness to heaven, but he invited us to walk a certain righteousness on earth so that we can own everything. The earth is the Lord and the fullness. The earth and even they that dwell in it. That's the path. It's got, oh God, our time is gone. Let, 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 let me do this just a little justice. Uh, uh. Hmm. If I open this kind of worm, can I close it? What time do I want to go? Because I'm loaded. Okay. He leaded. Okay, go back to my son. 23. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. Okay, number two. Number two. He maketh me to lie down. Everybody shout rest. God calls us into two things. He calls us into number one, rest. That's lie down. Number two, righteousness. And then righteousness, there are two different kinds of righteousness. Y'all got it? Okay. He made me to lie down in green pasture. In green pasture. In green pasture. Oh, why didn't I deal with this when I was there? In green pasture. In green pasture. Mula pasture. You you getting it now? In green, I lie down in green. I lie down in green. What does lie down means? Lie down means rest. That is, when it comes to your finance, God don't want you to struggle. Everybody shall green. Mula. Pasture. God, God is so careful. God is so careful. Because where he leads you, he won't let you mess it up. Why does he have to lead us if he has a pasture that is already green? Just throw me in there and I say, ho, oh, oh. ho. Everybody shall green, green. Pasture. pasture. Do you know why God don't let some folks have money? Green pasture? Because they are, the, the reason why some godly folks don't have money. Because that's true too. But because there is a danger when it comes to pasture. Sheep are so stupid that when you give them green pasture, they will not leave from that green pasture. Watch this. They will set 
in that green pasture. Oh, I'm seeing a lot of sheep like that. You're acting like he, he ain't talking to me. Yeah, if I take you out of the choir and put you at the altar, you leave in the church. If I reassign you from what God called me into this. No, 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 no. God ain't got nothing to do here now. This is the shepherd. <laughs> I'm the sheep. So the shepherd reassigned the sheep from the pasture they were. Because sheep are too stupid. Why? If you leave them in green pasture, the green pasture will become a ball pasture. There's something called overgrazing. They don't know where to stop and when to stop. Watch this. They will overgraze the pasture until they eat the root of the grass. And when the time comes next year to have some more grass or next month to have some more grass, they will not have it because they have overgrazed. There are some gifts that God will not give some people because of overgrazing issue. There are some cars that God won't let you have because of overgrazing issue. Because if your car can make it across Mississippi River, then on Sunday you want to go and visit Auntie in Joshua. And you would not come to church because you got a cousin down there at the borderline of Arkansas and Tennessee. You want to go and visit. Why? Because when you had the putt putt, you can't make it across the, uh, the bridge. So you stay your butt in church. Overgrazing. Overgrazing. But overgrazing is a danger. And that is the reason for the leading of the shepherd. And do not react negatively when the shepherd relocates you. Because he knows that if you stay too long where you are, you will become too familiar and a prophet never have honor in his own country. Over gracing. We do that. We over grace the talents in the church. We over grace the pastors in the church. Because we are too common. And too familiar. If you see the way they celebrated me this time of last week. You can ask those. If you see the way they celebrated me. But here some of you will just walk and almost knock my shoulder off. Overgracing. Overgracing your Aaron because he's sitting on the same bench with you. Overgracing. So even though you are in the green pasture, he still have to lead you. That is, move you in time to avoid overgrazing. Stand to your feet. Thank you for watching. I'm sure you were richly blessed by this message. For more life changing messages from Bishop Wesley Arije, visit us on social media. To know more about Pavilion of Hope, please visit our website at www.pavilionofhope.net or join us as a special guest for our transformation service every Sunday at any of our locations closest to you. Pavilion of Hope, where faith is renewed and hope is restored.